everybody, this is Denise from Foursquare Microfarm. Uh, and since my last dying video went awry, I'm going to try this again. And what I'm going to do this time is talk about over dyeing fiber. So this is a brown. And you know what? I'm not sure because I, I didn't. I got this from a friend. Whether well, this would be considered a, a rose gray. And actually, I think it might be uh, a rose gray. But for the sake of um, a labeling, we're just going to call it brown. And I'm going to over dye it with a cherry red. And I get a lot of brown fiber uh, a lot of times because I like natural fibers. I like the natural colors of the fibers. And I, I like brown brown, tans, uh, all those earthy kind of subtle colors. So I don't mind working with the fibers. And I know a lot of times people, some people anyway, want white so that they can dye it. And so uh, I can get this brown pretty easily. And uh, I like it a lot. And most of the time I use it brown just as it is. But sometimes I over dye it. And I love to over dye it with burgundies and reds. I, and it comes out really nice. And so I'm going to go ahead and over dye this fleece right here. Okay, so here's the, the raw fleece here. I uh, shook it out a little bit and getting it ready to put into the pot. Now, one of the features of this fleece is that uh, it's, it's variable in color. You can see the different uh, gradations in this color. And so this is going to pick up the dye really interestingly. I can't wait to see how it turns out. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the crock pot and I'm using the cherry red and I'm using vinegar um, for my fixative because I am clear out of citric acid. It makes so much easier for me to just go grab vinegar. Uh, a lot of people can grab citric acid but I live in the city and so there's not a lot of canning going on at Walmart. <laughs> Uh, which is basically where I have to, to get things. And so the little citric acid bottles, or those little spice bottles, you know those spice bottles. And they're uh, pretty pricey, you know, four, five, six dollars or so, depending on when and where. And so it's, it's much, much cheaper to just go get a gallon of vinegar for two dollars than it is really to get the citric acid. Though, it does take less citric acid to dye than it does vinegar. So if you are able to get citric acid, uh, then I would go for it. But by the time I order it from somewhere and pay shipping, it just doesn't really make that, that much sense. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the crock pot and let it dye up. And then I'll pull it out so that you can see how it turns out when it's dry. And I'm back. Okay. Hoping that all the insanity that is this room, uh, it's not visible through the camera lens. Uh, I'm spinning and making cards and sewing and all kind of stuff in the same room. So sometimes I forget to completely clear the view. I'm working on that. I just moved all of the spinning stuff into the room with the loom. So there'll be less clutter in the pictures. So at any rate, here we go. It's all over dyed and three days later it's dry and here we go. This was the original brown. This was the color. This is the over dyed with the red. Okay. And you can, you can clearly see the difference on the camera. It's not as good of a, as a difference as I'm seeing like, of course, live. But there's a really big difference between the brown and the over dyed. And so I'm going to run this alpaca through the drum carter. And, I, you know, I was going to blend it with something. But I haven't really quite decided. I haven't made up my mind yet what I want. I like it. kind of like it just the way it is. And I had some... Uh, Angelina somewhere it was like a copper color and I can't seem to find it anywhere now So I'm just gonna run this through gonna pick it take out some of these pieces right here Run it through and then after I run it through once and pull it off I'll have a look at it and see if I still want to blend it 
uh, with maybe some of the um, Aztec gold or something like that. Maybe kind of make it look like a sunset. Uh, we'll see. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a pass or two on the drum carter. Okay, here we go. i uh, just going to show you this, and this is the point where I plan on stopping the video. I, I decided to go ahead and blend it. Get the camera a little closer. And unfortunately, because of the lighting, you really can't see. So hang on one moment. All right, now, uh, what I did decide to do was go ahead and blend this with the uh, Angora and purple alpaca I had dyed. I think it's an ultraviolet. And some of the periwinkle merino. I had the periwinkle merino left over uh, as part of the um, fiber blending bags. That's what they are. It's the merino, silk, and... Ooh, I can't remember what else was in that bag. I think it's alpaca merino silk. But anyway, this is part of the dyeing from there. And this is my hand processed merino. I found, like, I found a source that was really nice and I actually enjoyed this one. So anyway, that's periwinkle. And I allowed the dye to break, which is one of the things I love about the periwinkle. I think I showed you in another video. And I get these really nice colors. Some of it's a bit like a, a light lavender, and some of it's more closer to a true blue. Let's see, this one's a true blue. And then these guys are much paler blue. And I'm not really sure if it's, this one's going to pick up the lavender. That's like a lavender color to it. Uh, but I really love periwinkle. It's one of my favorites to watch it die. Okay, so... And then there was a really nice, uh, deep lavender angora. And basically, I'm just going to run them together. And because of the lighting, you, can't, you don't really get a good look at that. But what I'll do is I'll take some stills, put those at the end of the video, and you'll be able to have a good idea of what it looks like. And of course, you can... You'll see the, the bat, resulting bat on either Facebook or Instagram. So you have a good idea. So I encourage you all to, uh, if you get those browns, especially the, the lighter ones, um, maybe next time I'll do a gray. I have some really nice gray uh, I'll pack up. Or any of those colors like that. Um, they over dye really beautifully. So you can always consider that option. If you wind up with uh, what you think is a boring gray, go ahead and, and uh, over dye it with some colors like blue and burgundy, um, reds. Uh, you know, it, the, the greens depend. Sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. Uh, but it, it'll, it'll add a little something different to the fiber and give you some other fiber choices, some other color choices. All right. Thank you for watching, you all. I'm always appreciative of anybody who takes the time. To, to watch my little strange videos. <laughs> uh, and I, I enjoy making them and, and gives me a way to connect with fellow fiber artists. All right, everybody, as, as always, you can find me on Facebook, um, Instagram, Revelry, what have you. Take a look at my pages that are listed below and links to those pages. And always, if you have a comment, you can just go ahead and add a comment or a question in there and I'll respond to those. And uh, if you got a chance, do me a favor and click the thumbs up because uh, I guess the ratings for thumbs up are more important than the ratings for views. I don't know. I'm learning this YouTube thing, but go ahead and click that thumbs up. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good day.